And the reason for this is you got homocysteine in your blood. I've got it in my blood. Um, everybody listening to this podcast has homocysteine. But if you have an impaired ability to break homocysteine down, right, to take that amino acid, homocysteine, and convert it into a harmless amino acid called methionine, if you can't make this conversion, homocysteine rises. It causes something called hyperhomocysteinemia, high homocysteine in the blood. When homocysteine rises, it becomes one of the more inflammatory compounds in the human body. As it's cruising by the inside lining of the artery, it starts to irritate the artery. It actually reduces the artery's um, elasticity and can even cause it to constrict. So think about this. You've got 63,000 miles of blood vessel, roughly, in your body. It doesn't take much narrowing to drive pressure up. Think about it. 85% of all hypertensive diagnosis, diagnosis of, of high blood pressure, um, primary hypertension or essential hypertension, are idiopathic, right? Unknown origin. Only 15% of them are secondary hypertension, of, of where we know the exact cause. And so what we do is we take people that have high blood pressure. We, we run a bunch of tests on them. We're EKG, it's normal. EEG, it's normal. Heart and lung sounds, cardiac cath, die contrast study. We do all of these cardiovascular tests and they all come out normal yet the person still has high blood pressure and that's largely because the high levels of homocysteine are causing vascular narrowing I mean this is a fixed system right so if I make the pipes smaller in a fixed system pressure goes up so in in Dana's case specifically and his you know he's thrown his uh, blood work out on the internet so um, you know we can talk about his labs but um, in his cases, he, he had one of the highest levels of homocysteine that I'd personally ever seen and our clinical team had seen. What, so when you say high blood pressure, could you define, like, I'm, I'm not good at that. Whenever I get my blood pressure, they tell me the number and they say it's good. I go, okay. But so I don't like, know what, what's a good number. So um, 120 over 70, 120 over and 80. what's high? 130, 140, 150, 160. When does it get dangerous? One, 140, 150 starts to get dangerous. People really? walk around at 140, 150. 160 all the time and they don't know it. It's the silent killer. You don't feel it You think you would he feel high blood pressure, but very often it's the silent killer because you don't feel it It's not like you hear your blood rushing in your ears. Although you may it's not like you feel pressure in your head or pressure in your neck or pressure in your chest That's why high blood pressure hypertension is is one of the silent killers in cardiovascular disease, mm. right? in fact one of the one of the first primary symptoms is sudden death, right? So we, we often put people on hypertensive medication before we actually look at whether or not they have high levels of homocysteine or whether or not they might have a gene mutation specifically called MTR, and you could test for it, or MTRR. And what this gene codes for is it codes for the enzymes that break down homocysteine and turn it into an amino acid called methionine. Right? And so if this conversion is impaired and this homocysteine starts to rise and your vascular system constricts, it can drive your pressure up. And it drives your pressure up without anything being wrong with the heart. So then we start standing on the heart, which is what happened in Dana's case. Beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, diuretics, all of these things. His blood pressure was still through the roof. Um, and I what think, was his number? I think he was 160... 160 over 110, I want to say it was very high. Mm. Um, and it was consistently high. Um, we were actually, you know, our clinical team was taking his blood pressure two or three times a day, seven days a week, and it was consistently very elevated, even though he was on blood pressure medication. Really? So statins? Is that what he was on? 